In this video, I want to demonstrate the uh, the Linux-like command uh, environment for building software, uh, and it runs on Windows. Um, why would I want to, to use a Linux-like um, build environment? Well, for me, I prefer the Linux <laughs> type build environment uh, any day. But um, for for you, it may be that you have some software that you need to compile, and it's set up for Linux. It uses make files and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's it's very easy to to grab the the free Linux software and examine the source code and and build it um, using a, a Linux-like build environment. So, what sort of alternatives are? are there if you're a Windows user? Well, you can use VirtualBox and have an actual Linux system running in on within a, a window on your um, on Windows. However, I find that Linux can run very slowly under Windows. Uh, for some reason, uh, I don't know whether it's the Windows or the Linux, but somehow they're, they're not... Uh, it's a bit slow. Um, also, when you build something, the thing that you build won't actually run on Windows, and that can be a disadvantage. Windows actually provides a Linux system. Windows 10 has its Linux, Windows 10 Linux subsystem, and it's you have to install it, of course, but um, you can use that. However, it's got some disadvantages. Firstly, it cannot execute a, uh, a Windows program, like for example your editor that you may want to use, and that's a disadvantage. Um, the other thing that it can't do is that when you produce an executable, it can't run on Windows. Okay, MSYS2 on the other hand runs much faster than let's say VirtualBox, and it you the executables that you produce are fully functional Windows executables and uh, the it, you can invoke uh, tools like a Windows editor from MSYS2 and it will just uh, it will all just just happen really well okay saying that let's go ahead and do it so here I have a web browser. In the web browser, I have the uh, the site where MSYS2 is, which is www.msys2.org. And if I scroll down here, we have the uh, prerequisites and the the link for the installer itself. So the prerequisites, it's got to be Windows 7, can't be Windows XP. Obviously, Windows 10 is fine, and and I, I we. Windows 8 would be fine too. So the installer is here. Uh, if you uh, want to check that it's a genuine thing and it's a good idea, then it's a good idea. You can check the SHA-256 checksum. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go straight ahead and install this. So firstly, I have to download it. And here we have uh, save the file, and it'll be saved in my download. I have to wait, unfortunately. Okay, we're just about there, and it's ready to go. So I need to invoke that program that I've downloaded, and say run. Yes, I want to install it. And this is a good place to, to put it. Uh, <coughs> you'll find it easily if you just put it there on the hard drive. So I'm going to just leave it there. So let's go. Next. And here it is installing. OK, it's installed. I need to run it. So here we go. I just press finish. And I'm done with my web browser minimize it okay uh, um, 
what we have installed doesn't actually contain the compilation tools, the um, the things that you might need to build software. What has been installed is is a shell and a package manager so that you can install those things. And the package manager is called Pacman. And to install something, you just type the command like this. So what is it that we want to install? Well, we need a C compiler. Um, make. Oh, zip and unzip can be very useful too. Something to get things from the uh, internet. Uh, okay. Uh, let's have a look. Anything else that I can think of? I think that's about it for now. So I can build things. Grip. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> let's run with that. I might have forgotten something, but let's run with that and install those things. Proceed with the installation. And it seems that, that those things have now been installed. So we're almost ready to go. But before we do anything else, a, a thing that you're probably going to want to do is to be able to invoke the editor. Um, so I'm just going to have a look in my menu, all programs, and find the editor. The editor that I'm using here is Notepad++. If I right click on that and say properties, I get the properties for Notepad++ and I can copy that target. Okay, so um, I'll just close my properties. Now, in order to uh, get those, to, to be able to invoke easily, I need to create an alias. So I'm going to use Notepad++ and I'm going to find the my .bash RC. So I open a file. Uh, and so there's local disk, msys4, home, Stephen, and here's my .bash RC. Normally you'd have to navigate there a bit, bit but uh, I've, it seems I've been there before. Open it. Okay, so I come to the bottom and I'm going to have to add that. So, alias edit equals and hopefully uh, shift insert and here it is. Great. Now there's a problem here because Windows uses a backslash. Here yeah, this is a backslash. It's not a forward slash. And Unix worlds such as Linux or MSYS2 use a uh, use a forward slash. So we have to change these backslashes to forward slashes. In the Unix world the, the backslashes are an escape. Okay here's another problem. We don't have C colon in, a, in a, a Linux world. We have slash C slash. Okay. A third problem is that we've got a space in here and uh, Linux will interpret that as being a separator. So we have to uh, put an escape in front of the space. And now that we've done that, we should be able to uh, edit just like that. So let's test this out. So I'm going to save it. Uh, save and I'll bring my editor out of the way. 
and I'll reinvoke my uh, so I can reinvoke it. Um, so as that's one way to do it. So when I do uh, or, or I can just say dot um, dot bash us. Hopefully that will work also. So now uh, now when I say edit something some sort of a file I'll call any file temp dot text and it, uh, Notepad asks whether we want to create it and you see I've, I'm now editing this file temp.txt in the in the current directory that I was in in msys2 so I don't really want to edit that file I'm just demonstrating the next thing that we want to do is to be able to go to your desktop where you might have things um, so let's uh, let's let's make that kind of easy um, so uh, to go there I would say slash C slash users slash Steven that ha that's me slash disk top and I'd want to create a directory in kdir and then uh, I think I'll just leave that uh, I'm doing I'm I'm uh, going to go back uh, I'm still editing here so I, I I'm going to go change directory to go back and I want to copy this path here okay uh, shift control C might copy it who knows might work might not so here's our notepad here I'm still editing in that file so uh, I can say D equals and with luck it'll just paste right in there okay so that should get me to my desktop quite far so I need to, to save that all right uh, now then all right okay so now uh, I have that so if I change directory to dollar D that should get me all the way back to my desktop and now I want to demonstrate the use of them so to demonstrate I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to get my web browser again and go to github.com it's hub.com I'm going to go uh, so if I'm in git um, so here's github.com and you can see here that I've gone to CSC netlib and uh, if I have a look here I should be able to find okay uh, what I'm looking for is ah, this is what I'm looking for yes it's saying clone so it's get, giving me a, uh, a a URL and because I've installed git now I should be able to grab that from github so git clone I should be able to paste what I've copied and there it is so let's grab that git git not command not found oh it looks like I didn't install git so pacman minus s git seems I didn't and git's being installed and it's done so now when I give that same command git clone I should be able to get that so that uh, software that I can go in and compile so here we go git clone is happening and it's done so I've got a directory here called CSC netlib that I've just created with the git clone so I'm going into CSC netlib and we can find source code here that's great so to build it you can see that there is probably a make file there it is so to build it we just type make and that code is building right away <laughs>